Welcome to this uh, overview of PXF Vector Edge Blur. So here I have a clip of someone playing basketball and I want to cut the player out and replace the background with a roto. So I have a roto prepared here. I'm using the copy node to combine the RGB and the alpha together. And I'm using the premult node to have an RGBA pre-multiplied image that's ready to be put on top of a background using an over. So far, so good. So that's great. However, there's a problem. If I look at the footage, it's got motion blur and my Roto does not have motion blur. So if I look at the basketball, the inside is blurry and the edge is sharp. That's a problem. So typically we would turn on the motion blur in the Roto node. So if we go back in the Roto node, we can turn on global motion blur. And now I have a blurry uh, alpha. So my alpha has motion blur, so that's great. But there's a problem. When I combine the blurry uh, alpha with the blurry picture, I can see in my result here parts of the ground uh, showing through the edge. And that's normal. See, you can see the lines from the basketball court here. So that's normal. That's expected because when you turn on the motion blur, the alpha grows and we end up with parts of the background. So a mistake would be to try to fix this by shrinking the roto, making the shape of the ball smaller so that the blurry areas stay on the opaque bits. This will of course fix my issue of seeing the ground, but my ball will end up looking smaller than it should. So that's a problem. The reason we're having the problem is because in the, this image here, in the blurry parts, we're having a mix of the ground and the ball. And we just want the ball, we don't want the ground. So we're stuck here. We can't just use the motion blur on the roto side. We need to apply motion blur here after the pre-multiplication. And that's where PXF Vector Edge Blur comes in. So let's copy our branch here to compare. I'm going to turn off the motion blur in the roto. And we're going to bring in a PXF vector edge blur. And I'm going to connect it here. And we can compare. We don't have the same shutter speed, so I'm going to slow down the shutter here. Here we go. So now we should be able to compare apples to apples. So now this is the version with vector edge and this is the version without so you can see there's quite a difference between the two let's comp it on top of our background here we go so this is the old way using the motion blur from nukes roto and this is the new way using vector edge blur so what's happening here basically what we're doing is now we're turning off the motion blur in the roto and doing only the opaque areas in the alpha. So the alpha or the roto has been made as tight as possible to include only the opaque bits and not to include the motion blur. Once we have that, we're using a vector generator under the hood to analyze the motion and a vector blur to basically blur the edges. So not only are we blurring our alpha channel, we're also blurring the RGB values. So essentially we're taking the opaque bits of the ball to recreate the transparent bits, which we cannot use from the footage because it's mixed with the ground. So this is giving us a pretty good result. So let's look at the uh, knobs and the settings in Vector Edge Blur. So the first one here is which channel to analyze for motion. So basically, where are the motion vectors coming from? Are we analyzing the motion of the alpha only or the RGB? It's up to you. Usually alpha gives better result, but you can also analyze the motion of the RGB image. So that's your first option. Second option is whether or not to apply the blur only on the edges. So if you turn that off, you can blur the inside. This would be a mistake here because now we're applying motion blur to pixels that already have motion blur from the footage. So we don't want to double blur here, but if you wanted to, you can turn that off. You can choose which method to apply motion blur. So the vector blur two method is using the GPU uh, accelerated recent vector blur node. This one uses the old node, so might be 
useful if you're having bugs or if you want slightly different results this is the old vector blur node and you can use the new motion blur node which uses multi sampling here so you can adjust the number of samples so if you have two low samples you're gonna see doubled up edges here so make sure to adjust that if you're using the vector blur method this doesn't uh, make any difference shutter time is how slow or fast your shutter is so the smaller the value the less blur you're gonna have so if you set it to 0.5 this is equals to a 180 degree shutter angle this is a 360 degree shutter angle and this is, would be a 90 degree shutter angle the adjust B box uh, feature is to fix errors on the edges of the bounding box. So let's create a bounding box here. I have a bounding box on my roto. So we're going to use the copy B box feature and we're going to copy the bounding box from our roto to our pre multiplied image here. So now we have a tight bounding box around our uh, basketball player. And if we use our vector edge, if we don't grow the bounding box you might have these kinds of artifacts streaks on the edges this seems to be an artifact of the vector blur node so we need to grow our bounding box a little bit we have the option here so for example here i'm adding 50 pixels of uh, extra size to my bounding box to uh, get rid of the artifacts so this is there for those types of problems and lastly we have the mix slider just like most nuke nodes we can mix our effect with the original so that way we can blend between the original and the final effect so there you go that was an overview of pxf vector edge blur i hope you've enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next video goodbye